Welcome again to Joe Stone Unboxing. Um, I did a video yesterday about uh, Ray Ford's terrific victory over uh, Kolbatek, uh, Otterbeck, Kolmatov, Kolmatov. He's messing up his name. Yeah, Otterbeck Kolmatov, yeah, who uh, Ray Ford stopped with only seven seconds to go. And that made uh, the American, the, um, the WBA featherweight champ, um, but there was another featherweight title fight, WBC title fight, between um, Raya Abe of Japan, who was challenging uh, Luis Alberto Lopez. Um, and Lopez just completely dominated uh, Abe. Abe has never been an elite Japanese fighter, but he's pretty good. You know, in his previous fight, he beat uh, the old Spanish war horse, uh, Kika Martinez. That got him the, the title shot. It was his first title shot. He's 30. Um, He's sort of fringe world level, but he, he had absolutely nothing to, to answer anything that um, that Lopez was offering. I mean, from the word go, Lopez went straight at him. Um, no airs and graces, just throwing those huge wild hooks, um, walking, like I say, you know, straight in the front door. There was no sort of subtlety about what Lopez was doing. And he can, he can be crafty, he can box a bit. But no, 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 it was, it was a complete one-way traffic. Um, Raya Abe, the usual Japanese toughness. A lot of these Japanese fighters, in fact, most of them seem to have great chins. You know, they don't often get really badly buzzed. Uh, and he was, in the first round, he was basically sort of struggling to find any kind of answer. Uh, he didn't seem to know whether he wanted to box in the back foot, whether he wanted to totally move, whether he wanted to come forward, whether he wanted to try and counter punch. It, but by the second round, uh, Lopez was, was all over him. And in fact, um, Abe ended up at the end of that second round with a, a badly damaged right eye. I mean, it was like a slit, you know, a real bad, bad swelling. It was only two rounds in. In the third round, there was more of the same. I mean, the doctor even had a look at before the start of the third round at, at Abe's... Uh, you know, badly swollen eye. Again, Abe couldn't really get any kind of rhythm going, couldn't find the range. Um, he was trying. You could you could see the guy was really tr desperately trying to, to do something, but just couldn't find a sort of way through the, the offense of Lopez. Lopez was just walking him down. Um, again, nothing really fancy about it. Lots of big hooks, mostly to the head, although he didn't... Then the third round, he did land a very good left hook to the body, which I think uh, um, Abe really felt. Um, sort of slid along the ropes. Suddenly his defence was very high. He wasn't firing any punches back. Lopez went after him. Didn't seem in any, any hurry. He was totally dominant, totally in control. Seemed to feel that he could, you know, just beat him up for 12 rounds, maybe stop him. Whatever the case, Lopez seemed absolutely convinced he was going to ring and uh, going to win, and of course he was right. Uh, and unfortunately for for Abe, no matter what he tried, and he was trying, he just couldn't do anything. Um, he he showed a lot. He showed a good chin. He showed courage. He was in at no point was he going to quit. The the referee again had a look at the eye after another couple of rounds. Um, you know, and at no point did Abe look like he wanted to bail out, and he had that Japanese toughness. You know, you talk about Mexicans being real, really tough fighters, which of course they are, but the Japanese don't get enough um, enough credit for this as well, because these Japanese guys, they will fight to the last breath, and tragically, as we saw on last year on uh, Boxing Day, one of them did fight to the last breath because breath, he was killed, but... Sometimes these guys have to be saved from themselves, and that proved to be the case with uh, with Raya Abe. Because uh, before the start of the eighth round, I mean, the eye in the seventh round, the eye was virtually shut tight. It got even worse. And then um, Lopez, at one point in the eighth round, put on put his foot, you know, his pedal to the metal, as they say, put his foot down, got uh, Abe on the ropes. Again, was landing. Nothing new about that. He was landing throughout the whole fight. Um, and Abe, uh, the referee actually intervened. Abe sort of skewed off the ropes and, and tried to get away. And then was about to, to resume, you know, fighting. But the referee said, no, that's your lot. And they're quite right too. Because no one wants to see the guy seriously hurt, for Christ's sake. Um, and this was his 
his first, probably his final world title fight. It's the first time he's been stopped. He's had three defeats in the past, Abe, all been on points. Um, but Lopez was just way, way too good for him. Way, in, in all departments, too powerful, too physically strong, too varied, too, too unorthodox, really, because Lopez... Lopez has this sort of weird, unconventional style. He can box a bit and he can be crafty, but he doesn't mind being unconventional. He doesn't mind, um, you know, even against, say, Michael Conlon, who himself has quite a sort of an unusual, um, not really what you'd call a conventional style, um, didn't seem to bother Lopez at all. He just, he, he said, OK, you want to play that game? We'll play that game. And he was just as as uh, um, difficult to predict as Conlon was. Well, Unfortunately for Abe, his you know he he didn't didn't have any answer to this, and and Abe he had, did have he had a rather languid style, but with Japanese fighters they seem to like to um, to sort of box fight, um, not to take many backward steps. Don't mind counter punching, but ideally they they'd like to go forward. It didn't matter what he tried, he just couldn't get his work done. Um, so it's a good win for Lopez, a very good win because I think Abe was a mandatory contender. Now Lopez has got the Mando out of the way. Who's waiting for him? Well, it would be sad if um, Ray Ford, having um, beaten Kolmatov with only seven seconds to go, um, didn't stick around at, at 126 for one more fight against Lopez because he's talked about featherweight being so difficult to make and you know, how he wants to move up in weight. And OK, if if the weight is too much of a struggle, he's right to do that because there's a, there's a safety safeguard and a safety measure here you shouldn't boil yourself down too much that's how you get seriously injured but if he can make it maybe a quick turnaround get him in with Lopez that would be a very fun a very very enjoyable intriguing and fun fight um, Ray Ford you know soaked up the pressure from Kolmatov the big banger took a couple of flush punches wobbled shook a little bit early on but Went through the gears, showed a real extreme maturity for a kid of only 24. And um, it would be interesting to see how he would deal with the the oddness, the strangeness, the the um, lack of conventional boxing from Mr. Lopez, and also the pressure, of course, as well. Would he be able to do to Lopez what he did to Kolmatov? I'm not convinced. I'm not saying he couldn't beat him, but... I don't think I think you know with all his his experience now Lopez having fought all the way around the all over the world and having fought lots of world class fighters that's the thing that Kolmatov lacked was experience and quality of opposition in the past um, Lopez has got that so I wouldn't think that there'll be any sort of you know last ten second stoppages you know, for Ford in case of uh, in the case of uh, facing Lopez but at the same time. Um, who would you bet? Who would you bet on? I mean, two very, very good featherweights indeed. I want to see this fight before Ford moves up. What do you think, though? Do you, who do you think would win if they did face each other? Um, maybe Ford could move up, pick up a belt at one thirty, and then Lopez could go up later on, and and um, they could, you know, settle their business at one thirty. Why not? But let me know what you think. Comments below, of course, as always. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the like button. Um, and yeah, I'm on holiday in Lithuania, wishing you all, all the love, all the respect, and I'll catch you later. Bye for now.